Well, here we are today at Hocking Canal Lock Number 19 Park on Haydenville Road, just between Haydenville and the city of Nelsonville in western Athens County. This used to sit on US Highway 33, but as of 2013, there was a bypass built around Nelsonville, which then took the highway more uh, north of this location and caused this road to not be a major artery of southeastern Ohio anymore. But that's not really the sole reason I'm here uh, just for the road or just the canal lock. Our story here and in this uh, little patch of grass uh, that is this park actually begins back behind me, even beyond the railroad tracks of the Hocking Valley Scenic Railway and actually over here behind these trees at the base of the hill. You see, this, this little spot here is uh, one of the few places left in Ohio where uh, such history, such thick and rich history exists that you can still stand on and visually see. Uh, this place really um, is ensconced in the, uh, the history of the, our economy, uh, our industry, and just the human history and geography of the Hawking River Valley in southeastern Ohio. So, many, many years ago, uh, in the late 1700s and in the years leading up to Ohio statehood in 1803, there were reports that people were beginning to settle along the Hawking River Valley um, in what is now Athens County and up, up even this far into what is now Hawking County. Uh, and these, these people were often called squatters because they didn't buy the land, they just found this land uh, a, a Upon arrival, thought it looked good uh, in a certain area and began to make a settlement and go of it there. But these people had really, they were cut off from uh, really any major uh, community or city and even, even the Ohio River, even though we think that the Ohio River is not that far away from here, uh, it really is because the only way to get there was to either traverse the river banks to get there or you could try and um, run a flat boat or some, something thereof, uh, something similar to that, uh, down the river. But this would often lead to accidents, deaths, um, possibly even just losing your cargo. Um, and that's, that was a problem. It was so dangerous and so problematic that... Very few people even attempted it, and as I said, the ones who did often perished. So, for the first few decades of the state's history, the people in the Hawking River Valley really, they were really cut off from civilization until the 1820s. In the 1820s, Thomas Ewing and the Ewing family of Lancaster decided to invest with um, some other people he knew in a canal. And this part of the canal was... Uh, finally constructed once the uh, state of Ohio took over the project in um, the 1830s. This was constructed in 1841, and the canal reached between Carroll and Fairfield County, uh, where it connected the Ohio and Erie Canal, uh, to Athens in 1843. And once that was done, the entire complexion uh, of the economy and really, really everything changed here in uh, southeastern Ohio because then, hypothetically, you could get on the canal in Athens uh, at Ohio University uh, in that area and take it all the way up to Lake Erie uh, and then hitting other waterways you could uh, eventually end up on the eastern seaboard so hypothetically you could send something or somebody from Athens County all the way northward and then all the way to the east so it was a massive shift in um, in the economy around here because this opened up the beginning of the coal industry and uh, other industries that could now ship their products uh, to a variety of places. All over, really what was then just the United States. But as the United States grew and the Civil War came and went, railroads began to be uh, opened up. And the roadbed behind me actually dates from the Mineral Railroad in 1869. So the summer and early fall of 1869, 
um, is when this roadbed was laid. So it's coming up on 150 years that there has been tracks at this identical place. And these tracks are now operated by the Hocking Valley Scenic Railway. But initially, it was the uh, Mineral Railroad. Then it became the uh, Columbus and Hocking Valley. Then it became the Columbus, Hocking Valley, and Toledo. And finally, in 1899, the Hocking Valley uh, Railway before the Chesapeake and Ohio took over in 1930. But having a railroad come through the Hocking Valley is what really sent the economy and sent the population booming of this entire area. Um, as I've well documented and it's been documented in several other places, the coal industry just blossomed. And the late 1800s and early 1900s, really, that, that was what made up uh, this entire region. Uh, the entire economy was based off of coal and clay and brick product as well. But as time went on, uh, the railroads eventually gave way to the automobile and uh, roads became to be more commonplace. And that, that's where this comes in behind me. Is that this, this road became U.S. Highway 33 in the 1930s and for several decades served as a main artery to Ohio University in Athens and linking it to the state capital in Columbus but also points north and west of Columbus and uh, all the way down into the state of West or states of West Virginia and in Virginia where US 33 ends so this main roadway for several decades including myself uh, being at Ohio University this was the main way to get from Hawking County where I lived to uh, Ohio University so this this is really a unique place and in, in that now it is quiet as, as you just saw a, a truck went by and there's hardly any other traffic it's very quiet now actually um whereas when this was uh the u.s highway there were cars i would hardly be able to be um be talking to you and you even hear me because there'd be so much traffic uh on this road and now all that that traffic has shifted a couple ridge lines over um to where the bypass now is. So this little area is so fascinating because you can come here, walk around, see a almost 200 year old canal bed, that's about 180 years old, a road bed of the railway that is 150 years old, and you can literally stand on and around and immerse yourself in the history of southeastern Ohio and the region and think about how much literally billions upon billions of pounds of coal and untold number of bricks literally were traversed on the railroad and on the main road uh, over behind the camera here so that this place really because it's off the beaten trail not many people come here anymore, uh, as opposed to several years ago uh, when the main main highway, as I mentioned, came through here. So this is definitely a place that if you can get out here and and take care of or and, and see this place and actually appreciate it, because there's not many places in Ohio where you can actually stand next to an, a piece of an old canal, a ra railroad, and a main highway. Um, all in within feet of each other and also in closing please when you do visit places like this please take care of it um, don't trash it up um, after I conclude this video I will be picking up the trash out of this trash can because when I came here to do this video I noticed how horribly bad this was uh, and there's other trash all over the place um, all over the park here. So please take care of your parks wherever you're at. Don't trash it up. Please put your trash back in your vehicle. If you see a place that looks like this or a trash can that looks like this, just put it back in your vehicle and toss it away at home. Uh, because there's really no need to to just toss your trash down, especially at a park, and especially at a park that's this historic and that is this important to the history of southeastern Ohio, but, uh, but of our state of Ohio as a whole. This place is really, really just a magnificent example of the rich history of southeastern Ohio.